This is the Nordic Pocket Saw. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unique item, keep watching. So I've been fascinated with the concept of a chainsaw that you could put in your pocket for quite some time. The idea that you can have a saw that is compact, lightweight, drop into the bottom of your backpack, there when you need it, not necessarily when you're expecting to cut wood, maybe like a survival item, that really did appeal to me. So when I had the opportunity to receive this one from Nordic Pocket Saw, I took them up on their offer. So let's just talk a little bit about the saw. I'll talk about what its intended use is for. I'll talk about my experiences with it. And then of course, we'll do some demonstration. So the idea of a pocket saw is that it's basically a real chainsaw, like you would have on a powered chainsaw, but it has nylon loop handles on either end. And you do have to be a little cautious when you're handling it because the teeth are very sharp. It is made of a high carbon steel that has been heat treated so that it remains sharp for a long time. But being made of carbon steel, they do have to be taken care of. So every once in a while, you will have to sharpen this and it sharpens exactly like a chainsaw on a regular powered chainsaw. So the same uh, file will work on this one as well, but you also have to keep it oil to keep it working properly and to keep it from rusting. So far, I've had it now for a few months. I've used it quite a bit and that's all I do. I have not had to start sharpen it yet, but I do oil it when I get it home. So let me give you a qu few quick specs on this. First off, it, this one is made in Sweden. Now I know that there is a lot on the market made in dubious locations, we'll say, of dubious quality, but this is an, an original Swedish pocket saw and uh, it's based on a pattern that was used in World War II, except made smaller, lighter, and more effective. There are two other versions that Nordic has. They have one that is a two-person version that is longer than this, but otherwise the same. And they have what's known as an arborist version, one that has teeth that cut in both directions. So the teeth are on opposite side and it can be used to cut in two directions. Plus it is designed so that you can toss a, rup, a ro rope up over a branch and then pull the rope from below to bring the branch down. So uh, uh, this is just the one person saw, but as you'll hear in a minute, I did use this very effectively with another person. It weighs 4.7 ounces, which is 132 grams. The chain length is 25.6 inches, which is 65 centimeters. And there are 33 cutting uh, teeth on it. The case is nylon. I'll give you all the information in the video description, of course. Now, the one thing I'll say right up front, because if you're looking at this and you've looked at them on site is, Mark, why did you choose green handles? Mistake, honestly. I thought it would look a little bit bushcrafty, but I've almost lost this a few times, dropping it on the forest floor, even right under my feet. Now that it's fall, the leaves have covered it up. I really wished I had bought it with the orange nylon straps. It's just a thing there you might want to consider if you're buying it for yourself. Consider getting the orange nylon straps just in case. All right, so what is this all about? When would you use this and what are its limitations? So really, a lot of people consider this a replacement for a regular saw, a folding saw like a silky saw, a bow saw of some types like the Agua Canyon uh, Boreal 21 or something like that. I don't see it necessarily as a replacement for it. It'll do a lot of the same work, but it won't work as well under some circumstances. Here's what I have found from my experience so far. This is best dedicated to emergency use, survival use, so that you small, lightweight, pack it away. But for most of my firewood, gathering and preparation, I still prefer either my Egg Canyon or my Silky Gomboy or some type of a pull stroke saw like that. What I have been using this for though is clearing deadfall out of the path. So a friend of mine and I went down a trail that we uh, lead guided hikes on after the recent hurricane. There are a number of windfalls across the trail and between this and a, and a smaller saw, we were able to clear them out quite effectively. Now, here's the thing, you can use this on quite large logs. My gomboy, my silky gomboy, will only handle maybe eight inch logs. Uh, then you're stretching it, you have to work around it kind of. You won't be able to go straight across with an eight inch log, not effectively anyway. We cut logs in excess of 10 inches in diameter with this saw. And in one uh, situation, we got on either side of the log and we used it two persons. So pull and let it go to the other person pulls and back and forth. And it worked very well that way. Here's my thing of why I don't consider this a true replacement. Yes, you could use this for bucking up logs, and as you'll see in a minute, it's quite effective, 
but there's a quite a steep learning curve on it. I didn't realize, and I didn't see anybody else talk about this on YouTube or in any other articles on it. Because it works like a chainsaw, and I'll give you some close-ups of the teeth as soon as I unwind them. Uh, yeah, they are sharp. I think I mentioned that already. As you can see the teeth, it is a chainsaw and it cuts in one direction. So uh, moving towards the way my direction is, that's the way the chainsaw cuts. It's not a two direction saw like maybe the Boreal 21 is. It's more like, if you think of it, it's more like a silky that it works on the pull stroke rather than the push stroke or the push and pull stroke. Now that's significant. And the reason is until I realized that, and I should have right off the top, what I was doing is when I got this under a log, I was pulling on both ends of this at the same time. And what would happen is it would bind up almost every time it would bind. And when this binds into a log, it's a challenge to get out. At the very least, you'll lose your momentum and you have to get it free of the log and start all over again. It wasn't until I realized that, yes, it cuts on the pull stroke, that that's all I did with it. What I would do is I would uh, orient this so that the teeth are pulling. Which way do I have it now? Yep, I have it in the right direction. So I oriented it so that when I pulled on this side, it would cut. And my free arm, left arm for me, I would just allow it to follow the chain down. So I wouldn't be putting any tension on the opposite side until I was at the end of my stroke. And then I would pull with my left hand, allowing my right hand to drop with the chain and pull it up. That went a long way to preventing the chain from binding in wood. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to save you a little bit of a, you know, this thing doesn't work. It does work as long as you understand how to use it. Orient it so that the teeth are cutting in the direction of the strong arm, in my case the right arm, that's the way I'd like to have it, it could be different for you. And this allow the trailing hand to drop under the uh, weight of the chain as you pull up with your strong hand and then in reverse when you're going back resetting for the stroke. All right, that's a little bit of what I learned. I think what you're more interested in is seeing this thing in operation. All right, so the tree I'm gonna use for demonstration is a tree that came down in the recent hurricane. This is rock maple or sugar maple. It's one of the hardest, densest trees, I think, in Nova Scotia at least. And this one was likely dead before it came down, but I did cut another section off and it is still plenty strong, plenty green inside. So this will be a challenge to cut for sure. The area that I'm gonna cut is about seven inches in diameter. So that's significant size. And uh, yeah, so I am wearing gloves for safety. It's not necessary, but I'd recommend it just to keep this rather sharp saw from cutting you. Make sure that the blade is oriented in the right direction. I'll stand over it. And again, the trick here is to pull only. Now, I will tell you now, this is going to be a workout, especially for this old man. This takes a few minutes to go through, but it can be done. So if I have to stop, you'll understand why. All right, let's get started. Got a little jam. I think what's starting to happen here is under the weight, the tree is starting to pinch downward on the blade. Something to be conscious of. Remember, once this lets go, it's got to go somewhere. Yeah, may not get all the way through. I find it's not uncommon for it to catch up right at the last moment. It's getting closer to the edge. As it comes to the very top, that's when I find it tends to, if it's going to jam, that's usually where it is. All right, catch my breath. And let's see. And right at the very top. Yeah, just right at the very top, it's starting to pinch. I think that's because of the way the tree is going to fall. All right, I got to finish this off though, right? So let's get it out of there. And if it's not working in one direction, then maybe I can get it to work in this direction.
There we go. No. Yeah, it's the way the log is positioned here. It's all but through. There, I can probably do this by pushing down on it with my foot. Get the chain inside to cut. Come on, there we go. Let's Yeah, right at the very end. That's where I find if it's going to pinch, that's usually where you're going to pinch it at. So you just have to be a little more present of mind about which way the log is going to go under its own weight. As you can see, it was right down to the very end, so there wasn't much left for me to cut there. And that's it. All right. All right, a few thoughts on using the Nordic pocket saw. First off, is it effective? Yes, yes, it is effective despite that demonstration. I have been able to cut a good number of logs with this. Uh, like I mentioned, down windfalls in, uh, uh, across paths along the way. This is the one I carried with me for that purpose. If I have other saws, maybe I'll use them first, but this one seems to do really good with logs that are down. Now, the question is, is can you cut dead standing with this? Yes, but very carefully. There is a greater risk with this that the chain will bind and that the tree will fall, maybe unpredictably. So you have to have good skills on in orienting your cut and the way the tree will fall. No different than if you're using any other saw, but it, you know, to use this, you're probably gonna wanna get down closer to the ground and that's a little bit more awkward in using this, but it can be used this way. Bucking up downed wood for firewood, yes, it's a lot of work, it really is. Now, yes, I'm a little bit of an advanced age and not in bad shape, but cutting that eight inch piece or that seven inch piece of wood took a bit out of me, to be honest, not too bad, but it did take a bit out of me. And I apologize for not being able to get that last little bit, but it was the way the logs was pinching itself together. Now, there is a technique to make this a little easier on yourself. It's not immediately apparent, but once you understand it and try it, it works out much better. And that is don't count on your arm muscles to do the work. In other words, you know, rather than having your biceps do all the work, doing all the, doing the pulling, try more to use your shoulders and turn your back. So your arms are pulling up, but you're using your shoulders as much as anything. So you can engage your back muscles a little bit better and roll your shoulders with the pull up and down. You have more strength and you'll have more endurance doing it that way. So the quality of this is outstanding without any question. I haven't tested any other pocket saws, but I'm perfectly happy. I don't think I need to try another one. The question is, will it replace my Silky Gomboy or my Boreal 21, Agua Kenya Boreal 21? No, it won't replace them, but it can complement them in that this can be in my pack for handling larger logs than I'm likely going to tackle with those two saws. Those ones I tend to use for firewood for my wood stoves or a campfire. This one is more about clearing trails and maybe bucking up some larger logs that I can then move to another location and cut down maybe with the other two saws. It's a good saw and there's no question I'm happy to have it and I will carry this with me, especially now that the winter is upon or coming upon us, you would know it from today, but as it gets colder outside, this will be good to have in my backpack regardless because it takes up so little space that uh, I can have it there as an emergency if nothing else. Okay. That's my experience with this saw. I am interested in hearing your experiences if you have this saw or something similar to this, or if you have any questions or other comments about this saw, please put them all in the comment section below. Again, I'll be putting all the information about where the saw can be purchased as well as its specifications in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.